Hey, how you doing? I am Mark, and I am here to talk about my soft step that I just got in the mail the other day. I think this is an unbelievably cool thing. Uh, I don't work for the company, um, but one part about it, I'm a Propellerheads user, so I'm going to show you how to hook it up with Propellerheads. I'm also a Windows user, so there are some kind of complications there. And really, I think in looking at their documentation and watching their videos, it kind of doesn't take it from more of a human perspective. They're really, really good at what they do, but they're very technical. So I'm going to kind of try and explain this in a way that I think might make more sense to someone who might not be quite so technical. So I'm going to start out a little step at a time. You can see I've got my reason to record already fired up over there. Um, and now I'm going to go over to my window. First of all, one thing, uh, they talk on the website about downloading the soft step uh, application. There's a whole folder of applications that actually uh, you download. So when you unzip the file, um, you actually get a whole series of things and that was kind of confusing to me in the first place I was like which one of these does it does it automatically do it what's the deal these actually don't need to be in your program file uh, uh, in your program folder on Windows I found out they can actually be anywhere um, but all of these different things I was like okay well which one do I actually use well as it turns out you can either use soft step easy editor or soft step editor but I found that soft step editor gives me a lot more flexibility to do a lot of funky things and even though it can look daunting it I'm gonna show you some ways that I think make it a little bit more simple than the people that made the first videos God bless them for doing it um, but anyway um, so I've already got it fired up so you know basically I I clicked into soft step editor I launched Soft Step Editor. It takes a little bit of time, so I just already pre-launched it. This is really important. This window that comes up, if you're on Windows, it talks about having to have um, how the ports are set up and all this and that. Basically, what it comes down to is when you plug the unit into your computer, in, right into your computer, a lot of the stuff should already get handled when it gets recognized. The drivers and all of that are gonna 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 come on board. Um, but one thing that doesn't happen is is that it can't natively talk to propeller heads. So in order to talk to propeller heads, you need to have a piece of in between software. And the piece of in between software they talk about here is this MIDI yoke software, which comes from MIDIOX.com. It says it doesn't work on Windows 7, but it does. You can read up on how to install it, all right? I am going to assume that you know a lot about propeller heads if you're here looking through propeller heads and you bought this kind of sophisticated piece of equipment. So what I'm going to tell you about MIDIOX, in case you haven't already downloaded it or using it for something else. So basically, you would download MIDIOX, you would install it. It's almost invisible. You don't see anything really. There's no application that's there. But what it does is it turns on in your control surfaces, it turns on these new MIDI channels. Okay, and what that means is if I go to add a new control surface, the, the funny thing is, is that you actually don't need to add a new control surface to use the soft step. Um, what you should do is you should install MIDIOX and then it's ready to go and we're going to work on the next steps. But anyway, uh, what would happen after you install MIDIOX, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to grab um, uh, an other not selected MIDI keyboard controller. And what I want you to see is in your MIDI inputs, and I have a ton of uh, peripherals, so don't worry about all the stuff that you're seeing here right here. Um, but once you install MIDI Yoke, you'll see these eight possible inputs. And that's places where propeller heads will accept MIDI data from something that's out there. Uh, MIDI Yoke is just a bridge into propeller heads that we're going to be using. But once the first step, I would say your first step to do is, is, is get MIDI Yoke from MIDI Ox, install it, and look in your preferences uh, to see if you've got these MIDI Yokes that are all set up here. Okay, so you've got eight of them. So I've got that. I'm good to go. I'm going to close out. Like I said, is I don't actually have to create a new control surface to do this. Okay, so let's get back over to soft step. We can close this warning window because we've taken care of all of that business that's there. And then I'm going to minimize propeller heads too so that you can kind of see uh, the interface that comes up here. Now this is, uh, it, it corresponds exactly to uh, what the pedal board looks like. And so, you know, if I take a look, I've got, you know, I've got my five and five on top and they'll all correspond to numbers that all correspond to the numbers that are on the screen there uh, which is pretty cool now I will show that um, if you can see that I'm holding this up not sure if you can even see but if I and I'm gonna do this by hand 
is I'm changing scenes and you can see that down here it says effects zero and up there it says effects at zero. These are some presets that I personally actually programmed and built myself. Uh, this to combine, this to uh, work with an effects uh, strip on well, one of the Polaroid's channels. Um, this, uh, uh, by the way, the buttons work really well with your foot, uh, but they are a little hard on your fingers, and I understand that's why they built it that way, but I'm pushing it. So you can see that I built one for Combinator zero and Combinator one. Um, and right now I'm going to talk about what building those scenes mean. One of the cool things is that as you're playing it, you know, you can tap through these scenes that you've created, um, and then they'll, uh, correspond to different, to different things that you're doing, uh, within propeller heads. So I'm going to put this back down on the ground for now. And so let's go back over here and let's look at this one that I built for Com Zero. So, what I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to control um, the four rotaries and the four buttons on the combinator. And that's combinator zero. I'm a kind of a computer programmer, so zero is first and one comes second. So this is going to correspond to combinator one. Um, so, and I've got a couple of patches in there that um, I think are cool kind of groove boxes, but they have really bad graphics, so it makes it harder to read. But the desired behavior, you can see that I'm spinning um, as using my mouse. I'm changing the drum groove. You guys have probably seen boxes like this. These change some patterns and cause your little jam session to go on there. So what I want to do is I want to convert instead of doing that with my mouse, I want to do it with my soft set. And so the way that we do that is by programming um, and pre-programming the soft set to correspond to various things. Now, I think on propeller heads, it's kind of easier than maybe it is in other situations um, because of the way that they have the mapping set up and the override mappings for MIDI control on things. Um, but let's go back over to the soft step window. And again, I'm going to minimize those ugly things there. And I am going to, my plan was to have the rotaries I know it's kind of flipped upside down, but I wanted the rotaries to be on the bottom and the buttons to be on the top. So you see I have it labeled R1, R2, R3, and R4. I did all of this in advance, just so you guys know, and button one, button two, button three, and button four. Okay. Um, but uh, the way that I built this little template that's here is you start with a scene and you just hit the save button and you create a new one and I can just I'll just say um, tester and I would set a location for it and I'm not actually going to do this right now because I don't know how to delete them um, but because I don't want to fill them up but basically this would create a new blank template for me all right now the crazy part when you look at this and you open these things up is that each of these when you open this up tells you where to send MIDI data and what to do with it and what to do with what your foot's doing there's a ton that opens up, but this is everything associated with button one. And I opened this and I was like, what? Um, and that's why I kind of decided to make a video that I hoped that, you know, I could help people out because the thing is so cool, but I think that it really looks daunting um, to people. And especially because I didn't see anything about explaining how to use it with propeller heads. So anyway, um, so we're looking here and I'm going to go through the important things that are here first. Now, every foot pedal can do multiple things, but right now I just want each foot pedal to just do one activity. I want the ones in the bottom row to control the dial from going from left to right, to value 0 to 127, um, which is, you know, basically, I hope you're familiar with that, that, you know, that's the, the count in MIDI, 0 to 127. Um, and so I don't care to have multiple things, um, and I just want it to light up. Um, when I step on it, and then, um, and I want to be able to, um, to, to, to trigger this. So, the first thing that I found out that was important was that these correspond to different functionality that you can do, um, in, uh, uh, with your foot. Um, and so what pressure live means is as you step on it, it stays and you let go and it goes away. Uh, pressure latch is as you step on it, um, the value changes, but it stays when you take your foot off of it. Um, and 
The cool thing is that I found there's the X latch and Y latch. And so I've got it on X latch. And so you can see, now watch, now I'm actually with my foot, I'm stepping on pedal one to the left and to the right. And you can see these numbers when, when I've got my foot go to the left, it goes to zero, it latches onto zero all the way, and then I can slowly move it up to down, back and forth, and in between. Um, I haven't gotten used to the, and I know that there are settings that you can set so you have more finesse over it. Um, this is just basic. Uh, but So basically, my foot is going left and right, bare feet right now, but I go left, I go right, I go left, and I go right. There you go. Left, right, left, right. Okay, so now actually let's go back over to propeller heads for a second and see what's going on over in there. Okay, right now, oh wait, nothing's going on, of course, because I haven't set any of these boxes up to do anything with this. Here's the part where you might not know or understand how this works. Okay, um, so, and actually I'm going to explain it in, uh, I'm going to go back and show more, but Every button in propeller heads has the ability, and hopefully you know this as well, to be remotely override mapped, which means that you can set some device to do something to it. So if I right click on any of these, I'll see edit remote override wrap mapping. So I open that up, and you can see that right now there's nothing set, but now I say learn from control surface activity, and I say OK, and now, boom, I go back. And I go forth, and I go back, and I go forth. Um, and we get that activity going on there. So how did I figure out which one's which? Like how did I make it so that, you know, now that was the, you know, this was in, in soft step, this was the first button that is there, and it's going right and left. How did I map that to these guys? And because this screen is open as well, I'll show you. So an important thing to see here is that you need to route your device to MIDI Yoke 8. So when you come into this and you've got a blank template, what you're going to see is you're going to see Soft Step Expander is going to be pre-selected. Um, you want to change that to one of your MIDI Yoke channels. I actually use MIDI Yoke for some other stuff, so 8 was a free channel. So basically um, you want, but whatever you pick in here, if you didn't have anything on MIDI Oak 7, and it'll actually tell you if you're uh, stepping on another device that's actually using it. But so I've got this set to MIDI Oak 8. And then here's a simple thing is I, set, I, I tell it, um, oh, and by the way, uh, one other thing. For doing controls like we're doing here, there's a concept of a CC in MIDI, and that is a controller value. So in this destination area here, then you want to make sure that that's set to CC. Haven't messed with all of the other stuff. I know there's a lot there, and I, I'm doing some basic stuff with you right now. Um, to people at, at uh, Keith McMillan, if I'm missing stuff, uh, this is just one day out of the box, getting it going, and 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 thinking I can you know help somebody who may be not so technical with it. Um, so anyway, I've got the I've got it going out to MIDI Yoke Eight, and then this is the I, I want to be on CC one. So you can see that when I went back over here and I checked my um, remote override wrapping, mapping, wrapping, uh, that you can see that it's set to CC01. Okay, so I'm going to close that. That one's good. This one I am going to uh, edit remote override wrap, mapping, and I am going to learn from control surface, and I'm going to step on the, the second one, and I set that one to two. Boom, edit remote. I'm going to step on the third keypad, and I've got three, and boom, I'm going to step on the fourth, and I've got four. Okay, so the way that I did that in soft step for each of these, each of these entries, you can see when I open it up, then you can see that pedal two is set all the same. It's on X latch, um, and it's going to uh, uh, CC two. Uh, when I open three, it's going to CC3. To me, this was a really logical way to do it, and I'll talk about how I did the next combinator, um, and it, it seems to make a lot of sense. Um, 
so those are the those are the rotary buttons that are there. Um, so what about the the on off buttons, right? I you know I, I want um, B1 through 4 to correspond, to, but these are just turn them on and off buttons. So I don't want to have to roll through it. I just want to be able to tap on my um, I just want to tap on the on the soft step and have the trigger go off. And so we're going to open up uh, button number six, uh, our foot pedal number six, um, and you can see that I changed the source to just foot on, and that's when you put your foot on it. Um, and then uh, the what happens when you do that is that I want to change this to this toggle 127 thing. What I found out was that seems to be what turned it on and off when I hit it once, turn it on, to off, on, off, on, off. And you can see that I just picked velocity, uh, or I'm sorry, channel number, uh, CC number six in order to uh, orchestrate that. And so then you can see here when I come down to the drum fill button, then I edit the remote override mapping and I go and I step on button six and it learns it. And then you can see on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Okay. So, so now, um, if I did, you know, button number two, uh, learn from. And this is actually going number, you know, using number seven, using number eight, and then using number nine. Okay, so that's all together. So now if I go ahead and play this thing, you can see, now I'm doing this with my feet. So, I was pretty excited about that. I was pretty excited about the ability to do all of that stuff. And um, there's a start for you. Just uh, um, I'm going to go back here into soft step really quick. Is that so? You can see that I've got a set list and I've got these two combis that I built. I basically I, I duplicated the first one, and then if I go into this one. Um, what I did here, if I open up uh, what responds to another combinator, is instead of uh, number one, I put it on number 11. Instead of number two, I put it on number 12. So what would happen is, is if I wanted to assign those to this different beatbox combi, then I would go ahead and um, make sure you see this, is that, so now, using the big triangle pedal over here, is that um, I came over to, uh, I'm going to go over one more, to Combinator 1, which, remember, I had 0 and 1. Um, so anyway, so I go over here, and now I'm ready in here to assign this, and that you can see now that one's set to 11, and this one is set to 12, all right. So, and then easily using the uh, the toggle switch, which is this big arrow button, um, and I'm doing that on the ground. I go back and forth between combinator one and two, and then so if I'm on um, or combinator zero and combinator one, I'm on combinator zero. I'm moving the drum house one, the drum groove one. So again, um, we'll go ahead and. And now I'm over in the
so I know it was a long video, probably break it up into two pieces, but hopefully that helps you out a lot in getting started with your soft step. And thanks for listening.